My name is Maggie Seldine and we are here today in beautiful Glenwood Springs, Colorado. I grew up in Carbondale, Colorado and had a lot of both positive and negative experiences in the world of just substance use, abuse, addiction, and all the intersecting issues like violence, domestic violence, homelessness, and all that. Now I am the founder and director of a harm reduction agency called High Rockies Harm Reduction, and we provide harm reduction and peer support services to folks here in the Glenwood Springs and Roaring Fork Valley region. So in 2006, on February 10th, my mother had a fatal heroin overdose. For me, one of the hardest parts of this story is that um, my mom had been in rehab in November, earlier, um, you know, in 2005, so like a few months before her overdose. And while I believe she was using other substances, to the best of our knowledge, she had not used heroin since leaving rehab. And so that makes this like a really um, kind of common theme that people use for the first time after these really extended periods of abstinence and they think that they can use that same amount that they were used to and they can't, their tolerance has diminished. The thing that makes it the hardest for me is that we had just moved in there two weeks ago. Me, my boyfriend and my best friend, my mom didn't want to let us move into the house and we, we showed her $300 in cash, she changed her mind and that that was the cash that killed my mom. I don't know how long, but probably not long before that, she probably went out to Denver, bought drugs with that money, because she hadn't been working, you know, and the morning that she overdosed, everyone was in the house, and it was, I remember, weirdly quiet, and so I got up and I actually went, came, I was in Carbondale, and I came to Glenwood um, to go to school, and I was at this, I was like at an apartment getting ready to go to school here in Glenwood and I got the call from my best friend that my mom had overdosed. What he told me was that my mom's boyfriend woke him up at like 11 o'clock in the morning, like freaking out, mom's unconscious, but he said that she had been unconscious at some point in the night and he had been able to revive her and turn her on her side and I think maybe she was throwing up or something like that and then he woke up again and she was unconscious. So he tries to take her to a medical facility in Carbondale really close by. However, wherever it was that he took her, they were like, there's nothing we can do for her. Take her to Valley View, the hospital in the next town over. So he's driving like 90 miles an hour to get her to the hospital. He shows up to the hospital and he goes into the ER and the woman's on the phone and he's screaming, he needs help. So I get there, she's revived and she's naked, like half covered in a dressing gown, basically dead on this hospital table in the ER. Basically they had been able to revive her body, but that was it. She ended up being in a coma for like three months and then finally they just said that her brain had collapsed in on itself from lack of use. So it's hard because there's still so many things that I don't know or understand about that situation. But what I do know is that her boyfriend could have responded faster. He could have called 911. We could have had Narcan. We didn't even know what Narcan was. So we didn't have any of the tools or any of the knowledge and we didn't have to lose her. There was Narcan, there should have been Narcan. Doing this now because I know that we can save lives and that every life is valuable and just really in the hopes that, you know, people might still have to go through these things, but at least they don't have to go through it alone and they can have, um, you know, that knowledge that can, can be life-saving that we didn't have back then.